Hello everybody, I have a bookish video for you today. This is what I want to read in 2021. So last year was the first ever time that I actually set reading priorities, like I had a list of books that I wanted to read last year and it's also the first ever year that I hit my reading goal. Thank you global pandemic and staying indoors and not doing anything. And even though I didn't get around to every single book on my priority list and in fact that list kind of changed and adapted throughout the year as my reading priorities changed, I still found it very useful for those days where you finish a book and you're just like, what do I read next? I don't know what I want to read. And then you spend like a few days not doing any reading because you just like can't decide what you're in the mood for or, or you don't have access to that book at the time that you want to read it. So having reading priorities for me meant that I kind of always had a rough idea of like what I wanted to read next. It didn't make me immune to those moments of like I don't want to read anything because sometimes you're just like not in the mood for the things that you planned to read and that's fine. But towards the end of last year I basically continued to add books that I really wanted to read but knew that I wouldn't have time to read last year on a new list. What I wanted to read in 2021 list. The list is a lot longer <laughs> than 2020's was but again it's flexible, priorities change, new books come out, new recommendations get given to you and it's all fine. This is not a hard and fast rule, it is not set in stone. That being said, I'm still gonna tell you about some of the books that I plan on reading this year. Another new thing for me in 2021 though, in terms of my reading, is that I started using Notion, mm, I know, and I created like a books database <laughs> and I've started slowly adding things. I've got nothing in there that I've previously read, I'm just kind of like doing it from 2021 onwards. But if having that way in Notion to track what I'm reading, tracking my TBR, tracking different priorities and stuff, if that proves to be useful for me and I continue to use it, I'll probably make a video about my whole setup if it works for me and also if you want to see it. I don't know. So let's crack on with it. First off, the books that I am currently reading. I'm currently reading Can We Talk About Consent? A book about freedom, choices and agreement written by Justin Hancock who is a brilliant sex educator. This is a January 2021 release so it is hot off the press and it's not just about sexual consent but about all kinds of consent with ourselves, with other people, in society, just how can we create a more consensual culture? And the other book that I'm currently reading I'm actually listening to and it is A Record of a Spaceborn Few by Becky Chambers. It is the third book in the Wayfarers series. I listened to the first two so I just thought I would continue listening to the audiobooks of them because I just enjoy the narrator and I don't know, I enjoy the story being told to me. I've literally just started it so no thoughts currently other than excitement. I love this world that she's built. Next I have some physical books to show you. They literally just arrived at my door right before filming this. Perfect timing. I ordered these from bookshop.org which I would highly recommend you checking out. They just launched in the UK like towards the end of last year and purchasing books through their website supports local bookshops. So definitely, definitely have a look. I also have an affiliate link with them link in the description. So this is my physical TBR for the year. I don't want to purchase like all of the books on my priorities list right at the beginning of the year because that is overwhelming and that just does not work for me. Instead I just buy a few at a time and like make my way through those and then like if I'm in the mood for something else I'll get the audiobook or maybe I'll try and get it from the library. We have You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. This came out last year and I really wanted to read it but just did not get round to it so that is why it is like top priority this year. I don't have a huge amount of YA on my list but this has come highly recommended. Next we have Axiom's End by Lindsay Ellis. Lindsay Ellis is a YouTuber, she does incredible video essays, I love her channel so much and this is her debut novel. It's sci-fi, there are aliens and with how much that I have been enjoying the Wayfarers series and then also how much I loved uh, Hank Green's An Absolutely Remarkable Thing. I realised I like sci-fi so I was like I want to read more sci-fi, I have no idea where to start. Oh this YouTuber that I really like has a sci-fi book. <laughs> 
So I have this. <laughs> Next up, I've got some nonfiction. Most of my priority TBR is nonfiction, which I'm not a huge fan of because even though I like reading nonfiction, it just takes me longer. And then I feel like I put aside fiction, but I can get like engrossed in fiction. Like I just love stories so much, but I just also love learning so much. And it's like, constantly trying to balance the two. This is Sister Outsider by Audre Lorde. This is a collection of her essays. And I got this primarily because I really want to read Uses of the Erotic, The Erotic as Power, because it is constantly referenced by other sex educators that I know. And I just feel like <laughs> this is required reading, but it's also just required reading as a whole, like lots of her different essays in terms of feminism, race, gender, class. Another really famous essay of hers is The Master's Tools Will Never Dismantle the Master's House. So I'm not necessarily gonna read this in order, but I'm just gonna like see what takes my fancy. There's another essay in here that I've just noticed that my friend Lena really loves, which is Poetry Is Not A Luxury. So I definitely wanna read that as well. Next is Revolting Prostitutes, The Fight for Sex Workers' Rights by Molly Smith and Juno Mack. I am really interested in learning more about sex workers' rights, sex workers' experiences, um, so that I can like incorporate that into my sex education practices and making sure that I am doing right by sex workers as somebody who occupies digital space and talks about sex. I don't know a huge amount about this book, it's just one that has cropped up over and over again as I've dipped my toe into this topic. Next up is All About Love, New Visions by Bell Hooks. This is another one that I just know about and I just hear people quote from or hear people talk about the ideas from this book in terms of all of the different aspects of love and I'm just really fascinated to read it myself. Also, Bell Hooks is someone whose name comes up over and over again in terms of feminist authors, and so it is about time I read some Bell Hooks. And then we have this bendy number. How do we feel about bendy books? I don't know, I do like the fact that you can like fold them. I am a spine breaker. This is Health at Every Size, The Surprising Truth About Your Weight by Linda Bacon, and this seems to be the book that everybody in like the body positive and fat acceptance movements recommends in terms of actually understanding how your weight is not the same as your health. Your weight is not an immediate indicator of your health. And that's an idea that I've learned from those communities online, but I wanted to go to the source. I wanted to actually understand how and why that is true because I've just been like, oh, okay, but not really like diving into it because I'm just like, okay, it isn't. That kind of makes sense, I guess, but I don't know how or why. So if I'm trying to have a conversation with somebody else about how weight doesn't equal health, I can't really say anything <laughs> beyond that. So hopefully this will give me lots to think about and digest. And then there's one book that's downloaded onto my Kindle, which is Superior, The Return of Race Science by Angela Saini. I've read her first book, Inferior, The True Power of Women and the Science That Shows It. And I really liked this. I really enjoyed all of the like sciencey research into men into women, it's very binary. And Superior is her most recent book, which looks at race and science. And there's lots of books that I currently do not own, but are on my TBR for this year. Either I haven't got my hands on them yet, or they're coming out this year, so they don't exist yet. And I'm just going to quickly list them for you now. If I enjoy any of these books, I'm sure you will be hearing more about them in the coming year as I do like more books and favorites videos and stuff. So in fiction, we have Felix Ever After by Kaysen Callender, Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid, A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor by Hank Green, Reputation by Lex Croucher, and The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Some other general nonfiction books that I want to read are Burnout, The Secret to Unlocking the Stress Cycle by Emily and Amelia Nagoski. Emily Nagoski is the writer of Come As You Are, which is one of my favorite sex books. She's written a book about burnout with her sister. And so I'm very interested to see what that is about. And then of course, I've got more nonfiction books in the sex, relationships, gender realm, because that is my jam. Quilly Autistic, The Ultimate Guide for LGBTQIA Teens on the Spectrum by Erin Ekins. This comes out in April, and I'm hopefully going to be interviewing Erin on my podcast. So this book is up there on my list 
definitely want to read it. Pleasure Activism, The Politics of Feeling Good by Adrienne Marie Brown. This has just come so highly recommended. So many other sex educators that I follow online have been reading this and recommending it. I have it ordered. It's just on back order. So I'm like, fingers crossed it comes soon. A Billion Wicked Thoughts, What the Internet Tells Us About Sexual Relationships by Ogi Ogas and Sai Gadam. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing those names correctly. So sorry. This is a fairly old book, maybe from like the early 2010s and I used to own it, but it just sat on my shelf and I never got round to reading it and then gave it away and now I'm trying to get my hands on it again and it's really difficult. <laughs> but research from this book had just come up in a couple of the classes that I've been doing for my sexuality educator certification course and so I just wanted again to go to the source material, I just wanted to actually read this book because the internet and sex, two of my favourite things and I want to understand the two together. And The Science of Happily Ever After, What Really Matters in the Search for True Love by Tai Tashiro. The second edition for this book literally just came out and I've been meaning to read it for ages, so maybe it's a good thing that I never got around to it because now I'm like, oh, second edition. I really wanna read this book because it's one that Shan Booty recommended to me and she talks about a lot and I just really respect her and love a good, recommendation from people. And I've been putting it off for too long, but now the second edition is out, I'm gonna read it. So there you have it. There's some of the books that I want to read in 2021. You can follow along on my Storygraph account. I am no longer using Goodreads. I have transferred over to the Storygraph. I mostly just can't be bothered updating two places at once. And I really want to support the Storygraph and have also like purchased their like early bird membership account. I don't even know what it is. I'm just like, I want to support you. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Let me know any books that you are planning on reading this year in the comments. Do we have any of the same books on our lists? Have you read any of the books that I want to read this year? Let me know. I hope that you're all well and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.